Hey everyone, welcome back. We're finally here for episode four of Game Audio Analysis. A little background as to why it's been taking me so long. I was actually finishing up my degree in music technology, so that took up a, a lot, a lot amount of time, including an insane thesis uh, that <laughs> pretty much took over my life. But I learned a lot during the course of this thesis, and I researched a really interesting topic related to game audio. And since this is a topic that I'm still really excited about and think holds a lot of potential, I wanted to talk about it with the internet. If you couldn't tell by the title of this video, what I'm referring to is procedural audio, sometimes referred to as procedural audio synthesis, procedural sound, procedural sound design. All of these terms are basically different ways of describing the same thing. Procedural audio is the practice of using synthesis software like Max MSP or Pure Data to create sounds for video games with purely digital tones. Since procedural audio doesn't require recorded sound effects, it can create a lot of sound variability in a game, instead of having the same sound effect repeat for a sword swing or a rain loop over and over and over again, a skilled sound designer can create a synthesis pass to generate these sounds on the fly as the game is being played. Furthermore, they can have the engine randomize certain variables such as pitch, certain aspects of EQ, compression, reverb, all of the above with just changes of numbers as opposed to requiring a whole new sound file. This in turn would avoid listener fatigue. You know that feeling when you're playing a video game, you hear a sound effect, then you do that same action again, and you're like, hey, I've heard that sound effect before. This sounds awfully familiar. Well, in the real world, most things don't sound the same way twice. And as such, when we hear the same sound the exact same way, twice in a video game, it breaks our immersion with the game. Since procedural audio has the potential for sound variability, it greatly reduces the amount of listener fatigue in video games. On a logistical level, procedural audio is very useful because it greatly reduces the file size of audio assets. Considering the scope and size of video games these days, all of the sound effects could take up so many gigabytes of space. A rain or wind loop alone could take up a couple hundred megabytes. Now extrapolate that to the scope of a massive game like Skyrim or Fallout. You can probably imagine how much space these audio files alone will start to take up. Reduce file size of audio assets is also particularly useful for video games from a publishing standpoint. Most console games are printed on Blu-ray discs nowadays. For those of you who don't know, Blu-ray discs can hold up to 25 gigabytes, and double-layer Blu-ray discs can hold up to 50. Having said that, there's really not much further we can go with disc technology because Blu-ray discs are coated with ultraviolet rays. Ultraviolet rays are at the end of the visible light spectrum for humans. This means that we can't create disc technology with any narrower wavelength because the products that would be printed on it, humans wouldn't be able to see. Needless to say, reducing the file size of audio assets will make it easier to print an entire game onto a Blu-ray disc. Furthermore, we're seeing a huge surge in digital downloads over the past couple of years between Steam, all of the mobile marketplaces like Google Play and the Apple App Store. Even consoles are having their own digital marketplaces. I think it goes without saying that the smaller file size of your game, the faster it's going to be the download for the consumer. All these advantages of procedural audio sound pretty amazing, right? But in the words of Rumpelstiltskin, All magic comes at a price. There are still some pretty big disadvantages when it comes to procedural audio and creating sounds with purely digital tones. Having a computer generate these sounds from the ground up requires a lot more processing power than simply playing an audio file back. While computers are continuing to become increasingly powerful, bear in mind that video games are one of the most intense things a computer can do. And with all the increases in graphics and scope of the games, the processing power has only gone up for video games. Tacking extra audio tasks on top of these can create some serious frame rate issues for a game if not handled correctly. I'm sure you could probably guess that another disadvantage is procedural audio doesn't quite have the same sonic depth as recorded sound effects. Creating rain with purely digital tones isn't going to sound anything like recording real rain. And the same goes for any other sound effect you create. Granted, it won't sound like a noise wave on an NES or something you'd expect from like an arcade machine back in the day. 
Synthesis technology has advanced a great deal over the years, and you can make some pretty believable things with the software that's available. Last but not least, and this is honestly one of the biggest things when it comes to publishing a game on time with full development and everything, procedural audio as it stands right now is quite difficult to implement into modern game engines. It's almost like they were intentionally purely designed for game development. Oh wait. Because of this fact, there are only really two options right now for implementing procedural audio into a video game. You either have to do some serious coding to embed max or pure data into one of these game engines and generate the sounds from them in your game, or you're going to have to create your own game engine from the ground up. And for most people, neither of those are solutions they really want to deal with. Having said that, some video games are already implementing these techniques, and some of the games are much more major than you would think. 2015's Grand Theft Auto V, one of the biggest games maybe to ever be released, actually used procedural audio for some of its sound effects. Most of the sound effects were drone sound effects such as air conditioning units, bicycle chains, things that would kind of be in the background and ongoing. Since Rockstar Games has had their own game engine for years that they've continued to build upon and expand, they just needed to add a competent audio synthesis plugin for their game engine to implement these sounds into their video games. If you're really interested, technical audio director at Rockstar, Alistair McGregor, has a fantastic talk on this from GDC 2014. I'll include a link in the description below so you can check it out. It was a really big reference point for my thesis work, and I highly recommend at least giving it a watch. Another interesting game that came just a year earlier than Grand Theft Auto V was Fract OSC in 2014. Fract OSC was an independent game developed by Phosphine Systems. For lack of better terms, it's a first-person musical exploration puzzle game. In this game, the player finds themselves in a dark and desolate wasteland of sorts. As the player explores, they come across all of these monolithic structures that kind of come to life as the player approaches it. It's the player's job to interact with these structures and solve the puzzles that they hold. In doing so, the structures become brighter and start emitting more pleasing and louder sounds. What's really interesting is that every single sound in this game is procedurally generated. Not a single one is recorded beforehand. So you're basically playing a synthesizer while exploring this game and solving all the puzzles. It's absolutely incredible that this was developed by such a small team, and furthermore, they did it with creating their own game engine from the ground up. Fracto SC is a really interesting and engaging experience, and if you're curious to see it, I'd recommend checking it out. Mobile games certainly aren't devoid of procedural audio either. The mobile game Dots & Co, developed by the Dot Studio in New York City, actually implements a procedural audio engine using pure data and Unity. In Dots & Co, you connect colored dots to solve puzzles and clear pretty standard game boards. While these pure data sounds aren't used at many points of the game, they are used for one of the key sound effects that players often hear throughout the game, the sound of connecting the dots. But what's really interesting is that as you connect more and more dots, the sound will continue to rise in pitch. There are also some other sound effects created by connecting specific shapes like squares. These dot connection sounds are absolutely integral to the player experience, so it's important that they sound good and have a lot of variability so that players don't just hear the same thing over and over and over again and eventually get tired of it. So if you're watching this video and you're interested in procedural audio, you're probably wondering where to get started. The first resource I recommend is a book by Andy Farnell called Designing Sound. This book goes into a great amount of technical detail when it comes to synthesis and even really dives into what audio aspects and frequencies make up certain sound effects that we hear in everyday life. What's even more helpful is that this textbook contains sample patches for a wide variety of different sound effects. Having referenced a lot of these in my thesis, I can say that they're really more of good starting points and not very good final products. Some of the quality on them is a little lackluster at best, and I really had to toy around with them and add some more things on top to make them sound much better for my thesis. If you already have some great synthesized sounds, or are just looking for a really good way to implement these into your game, there are some good resources on that as well. One of the programmers on Dots & Co actually created a whole blog post about how they integrated pure data right into Unity for game development. This blog post also contains a link to a GitHub repository, which contains the code that he used to integrate the pure data patches into their Unity game engine. While this script can be very powerful, it's not quite flexible enough to work with Max MSP. So if you're looking to use that, there's another script you can use instead. A programmer by the name of Horror 
Jorge Garcia Martin has actually a script called Unity OSC that has its own GitHub repository as well. By working with this script and adapting it for my own game, I was able to connect the synthesis sounds from Max to my Unity game. However, one of the big drawbacks of this method is that you'll need Max open while the game is running. If you're looking to publish your game on a larger scale, this probably won't be viable because you can't have the Max software embedded into your game. As such, I'd highly recommend going with Pure Data. While Max does sound better, it also costs $400, and Pure Data is free. Needless to say, I think Pure Data is a really good route to go if you're trying to get started in this, or even really trying to publish a game with it. You can still get some really good sounds if you know what you're doing. I'll leave links in the description for all the procedural audio resources I mentioned in this video. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope you found this topic as interesting as I do. If you have questions or just want to talk more about it, feel free to reach out to me here or on any of my other platforms. Thanks again everyone, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.